we are really grateful that we have our speaker, Pastor Michael Simpson, with us this Sabbath. And I'll hand over to Pastor Simpson to give us a scripture reading. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. How are you this morning? Well, thank you. You're breaking up. Am I? Oh, we got you back. We have you back. <clears throat> praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's good to be back. <laughs> All right, thank you so much for inviting me to come and uh, and share with you Fancy. the Word of God this morning. Can you see me now? Yes, I can. Yes. Yes. Oh, oh, praise yes. the Lord. So uh, our scripture reading this morning comes to us from the book of uh, Revelation. So we go to Revelation chapter 18. I've been listening and it's good to hear you still fellowshipping in on zoom um and let me say hi to brother scarlett how are you doing all right thank you and sister scarlett of course and i can see some good friends of mine there so i'm gonna see you for a while um as pictures are coming up so praise the lord okay our scripture reading then um from uh, the book of revelation reading from um, chapter 18 and i'm using the today the um new king james version the bible says after these things, I saw another angel coming down from heaven, having great authority. And the earth was illuminated with his glory. And he cried mightily with a loud voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the dwelling place of demons, a prison for every foul spirit, and a cage for every unclean and hated an hated bird. For all nations have drank of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth have become rich through the abundance of her luxury or delicacies, King James would say. Verse four says, And I heard another voice from heaven saying Come out of her, my people, lest you share in her sins, and lest you receive of the plagues. May God bless his words. Let me say good afternoon, everyone. Mm -hmm. As my custom is, begin with prayer, if you don't mind. Eternal Father God, give you thanks and praise for all things, O God. Father, the good times, the bad times, and the in-between, we give you praise. Because through it all, your grace and your mercy prevails. The blood of Jesus Christ prevails. And we know the blessed hope, which is the second coming of your son, Jesus Christ, will also prevail. And one day he will be here in reality. Amen. Until then, may you give us the strength Amen. and the courage and the faith, Lord, to live that life in expectance of your coming. May your peace rest upon us now, we pray, upon all who are gathered within this um, fold, okay, of believers to just glorify your name. Thank you for those who have participated um, and engaged in the program thus far. May you now, Father, we pray, rain down your blessing, touch us, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I'm sure I saw Brother Clarence there somewhere. Um, a picture went across the, the place there. But um, praise the Lord for you. Amen. And um, and thank you for inviting me. So <clears throat> um, I'm looking at the Holy Spirit today, but I'm looking at it from the context of um, Revelation chapter 18. And um, in context of Revelation, the coming of Jesus Christ. Uh, we are living in this uh, pandemic um, time of change. And would you believe it? You know, because for, for many of us as uh, Adventists, and, you know, we were, we were expecting, and many were expecting that the next big thing is gonna, will, that would happen, basically, would be something like, you know, the introduction of a Sunday law or something like that, um, restrictions and worship. Um, but nobody uh, imagined a pandemic like COVID-19 
to come mm. and shut the world down. Mm. Not only shutting the world down, but to bring about a massive change across political, social um, landscape. Things are changing like crazy. Mm -hmm. On top of that, who would have thought that a brother being held down by a police officer for some 8 minutes and 46 seconds or thereabout would also be a catalyst for massive change again across the globe? These two things have done more to change the world in these few weeks and months than anything else since 9-11. 9-11 was the other watershed moment of change where we woke up to a different world, a new world. And now it, 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 it is as if the, the, the change from 9-11 was not completed and so now there is chances and opportunities for those who are behind the scene pulling things to put in more change again in how we should behave, how we should act, and how we should do things. And so we are living in a time of change. In this time of change, because today I'm not really going to talk about prophecy and, and all that today. I'm going to talk about relation, relationship. So in this time of change, we are, as a people, now, yes, church buildings are closed, or where our places that we used to rent are closed, and we are forced to do this on Zoom or and on micro, uh, Microsoft team management systems to have video conferences and virtual churches like this. To me, by the way, it, this is just a... A, a practice for what is really to come because I know that what is coming is worse than what we're experiencing now. So right now, it is time for the church really to refocus, to take a step back and to reevaluate what's going on. I realized when I read the text this morning that there was another meeting going on early this morning, I think, according to the text I received about worship. We've got to realize and realign ourselves to, the, to what we call now the new norm. Whatever that new norm will look like when we come out of these, uh, this um, COVID-19 situation, the church needs to be ready and the church needs to be already ready. We can't get ready when we come out. We need to be ready while we are going through it now to make preparation for this new norm. As a result of what's going on at the moment, many, many people who have left the church we discover are coming back and joining the church. Praise the Lord. What do you say? It is a wonderful thing to see. Not only that, but even folks who did not want anything to do with the Bible and God, they are also reaching out and say, well, I believe it's time for me to have a look at the Bible to see what it's saying because I've really never engaged in the Bible before. So we have... Uh, an interest of people across the globe who wants to engage with God's word at this present time. The question is, as a church, are we in a position to welcome them and to be ready for them? God is waiting. I would want now for, for, for me to share my screen with you that you see the text that I'm using. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to my screen right now and share and um and see what we can see okay uh so give me a moment as we get that in gear and i believe you can see that yes i can't hear you are you still there yes 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 oh i'm glad you're still with me <laughs> but you went oh, yes. away somewhere else okay <laughs> so <laughs> so the work of the Holy Spirit, and we, uh, we, I mean, we haven't got time today to go down into the full workings of the Holy Spirit, so obviously we are taking an aspect of the working of the Holy Spirit. In, in Roman, sorry, Revelation chapter 18, which is my favorite book in the Bible, by the way, um, next to the book of Daniel and book of John, Revelation 18, um, 1 to 2 says, And after these things I saw, John says, on the Isle of Patmos, writing, 
I saw another angel coming down from heaven, having great authority, and the earth was illuminated with his glory. Wow. Ellen G. White comments in this um, uh, uh, um, account in the Bible, and she said, this angel is the angel of revival, basically. The illumination is the glory that comes um, with this angel, with the, this ability to, you know, that people who are believers, not just people, but believers, will actually receive the power of the Holy Spirit, like a Pentecost 2 or Pentecost 3, depends where you are on, on the scale, and they will be on fire for God. The message of the three angels will go around the world like wildfire, like crazy. And people will know the truth. Here we are with this prophecy. And then you consider where we are now, locked down for the past two months or so, unable to witness, unable to go out and do seminars and campaigns like we normally do. And you said, wow! Right now, it doesn't seem possible, but the hope that we have in Jesus is that it is possible. What do you say? It is possible because God's word is true. Mm -hmm. Now, verse 2 says, he cried with a might, well, mightily, he says, with a loud voice. This phrase, loud voice, in the Greek is a, is a word that it comes from one word. It's the megaphone. Mm -hmm. Megaphone, you know what a megaphone is, right? Um, he, he cried with a megaphone, uh, megaphone voice, a extremely loud voice. And what does he say? Babylon the Great has fallen. Babylon has fallen. Here we are in time, locked down, locked in, and yet we have a message to carry to the world with a loud cry, witnessing to people. And so this time period then must be a time of reflection. It must be a time when we are reflecting about God's word and not only reflecting, but also actively planning what we need to do when we get out. So your church there in Bilston need to come up with projects and plans and how things will be after the COVID-19 um, lockdown. What will it be like? What would you do differently? How will you behave differently? One of the things that we understand is that whenever there is a situation like this that calls a game change, in the way the world does, does things, there is a very short window where churches are able to go forth and witness to people because they are more open and willing to listen to what you and I have to say about the God whom we serve. A short window before they drift back into normal behavior where they no longer want to know about God. The materialism mm. and the cares of this world engulf them and their time and their resources and they shut the door and no longer is that opportunity so readily available to us. So we need to be a people ready. We need to be a people on point. We need to know what God is doing we need to inquire from him, Lord, what are you doing? Help us to be like the sons of Ezekiel, who know the time in which we live. And help us, but, not, but knowing the time is one thing. We also need to know what God wants us to do. That is key. We need to know the time and also what God wants us to do. Because guess what? This angel here, of Revelation 18, this messenger, this great message to be preached to the entire world will not be preached literally by an angel. Yeah. It must be preached by God's remnant church. This is a message expressly from heaven to God's last day church right now who are locked in, locked down, 
but one day will be released. Praise the Lord. What do you say? It may not come Amen. today. It may not come next week or next month. But one day we will be released from this lockdown and go out. But to do what? Amen. We must go to fulfill the mission of Almighty God. Amen. You say, church, we've got to be ready. So this is a time for prayer and fasting and preparation and reading and reading and reading God's word and studying God's word in how to do Bible studies, how to do a seminar. It's time to be ready. Use the time wisely, my friends. <clears throat> because the prediction is that Babylon, the system. Babylon, don't forget, Babylon is not talking about Daniel 2 Babylon. That's not the Babylon we are talking about. We're not even talking about, we're not even talking about, you know, the Roman Catholic Church. We're not talking about that. Babylon is wider than that. Babylon is the entire system, world system across every country and every place. That's Babylon in its broadest sense. That system will fall and collapse. Mm -hmm. Finance collapse. Stock market collapse. Social structures collapse. Police the state introduce. Babylon, the great, fallen, and has become a dwelling place of demons, a prison for every foul spirit, and a cage for every unclean bird, the Bible says. The time is coming, my friend. It's coming, and no one can stop it. But we as God's people need to be on point and to be ready for him when he comes. Verses 3 to 5, same chapter says, For all nations have drunk of the wine of her wrath, of her fornication. I'm, I'm resisting not to go deep into prophecy this morning, but here again, we, we, the wine here is doctrines or teachings. We know that as Adventists. So the wine here, for all nations have drunk of the wine of her wrath, of her fornication. Babylon also... The system across the world will be governed by just one little institution. Uh, excuse me. Uh, the papal power. We know that. And the papal power, they have their own teachings and their own wine to give, to drink. And the kings of the earth will drink it. And, you know, not only that, they will commit fornication with her. Fornication means going, a, going a, a, a against um, the Bible going against the word of God, going against the teachings of God and the will of God to embrace a man-made teaching. They will do that. So the time is coming for that. Yeah. And the merchants of the earth have become rich through her abundance, the abundance of her luxury. And so we see that today. You know how much billions of pounds and dollars um, some folks have made since we have entered the lockdown? People are profiting from COVID-19 like crazy. And they will even profit more because they are hunting for this miracle vaccine that every person in the world will need to um, be, receive at some stage or another. Have mercy on us when that comes. And the Bible says, and I heard another voice ah, from heaven say, come out of her, my people. And that's my sermon. Come out of her, my people. Least you share in her sins. And least you receive of her plagues. For her sins have reached to heaven. And God has remembered her iniquities. My, 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 my. My, 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 my. Her sins have reached to heaven. My friend, this phrase is a phrase that is as old as Noah himself. Her sins have reached to heaven. When it was the antediluvian time, in the days of Noah, the sins of the nation at the time, only one nation then, the sins of the nation at that time had reached to heaven. And the Bible tells us in, in, in Genesis 6 and even 5 to 6, that even the, the very imagination of their thoughts of humanity at that time was corrupt and evil and all they did was to sit around and planned premeditated crimes that was a cesspool time for humanity oh yes and when it was time of Saddam and Gomorrah 
their sins reach up to the heavens as well. And God came in, destroyed the Antiluvians with, with flood, destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah with fire. And then when the sins of the most advanced country in the world, Africa, were reached to the heights when they were worshipping demons and, 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 and images. This is a time of the pharaohs in Egypt. Sometimes we forget that Egypt is actually in Africa. The most advanced place on earth at the time. And their sin reached there and God stepped in and the ten plagues fell. What do you say? But the last seven only fell upon the Egyptians. And so God got fed up with humanity again. He's about to get fed up with humanity again. The time for our liberty is at hand. God is saying too much, too much, too much, too much. It's time for him to come. But before he comes, he's telling his people, get ready and deliver the message that you need to deliver. This message needs to go to the ends of the world. Because he says, according to this text, if this text is interpreted correctly, come out of her, my people. If this text, my friend, if this text is interpreted um, uh, properly, then guess what? Then guess what? Then it, mean, it means that God has people in Islam, in the Buddhist religion, in every religious group on the planet. He has his people in the Baptist, in the Pentecostal, in the Adventist, everywhere. He has his people. And the remnant church. Yeah, I did mention Adventists too. Because the call comes to us too. Because not all of us who are in Zion are of God. And the call will come. It's time to make a change. You stay here or come with God. So come out of her, my people, is the clarion call that goes across the globe. Get ready because God is coming. He is on his way. Come out of her, my people, because the plagues are not for you. The plagues are for the devil and his angels and anyone who follows them. It's not for you. So we need to warn the people that God is on his way and the call is you better get ready because whether you like it or not he's coming what do you say he's coming so god is now saying it's time it's full time for you um to behave like adventist because we have a work to do to call people out of sin now we should not do it you know with the some of us are just too much pride as adventists and we go out there as if we are it. We are to go and do this work humbly. We are to go with a graceful way, not with arrogance, not with a dominance that we have the truth and you need to follow me now. Because people who are in their religious groups, people who have been believing for all their lives, it is a painful process to give up on the things that you are accustomed to, to reach out to something that you don't know. So when we go, we need to recognize that people have invested interest in the things that they believe, even though to you and me, these things may not be important or not seems, uh, does not seem to be important, it is an importance to them. And so we need to go, not just with courage, but with also grace, and go with the Spirit of God, that he may help us to deliver the message in a right context that people may know that we are of God. God is coming. Ellen G. White has this to say, um, page 299, Evangelism. The in-working ministry of the Holy Spirit is our greatest need. Are you with me? The inworking. It, it is not the evangelizing and the going out there and telling them to come. The work starts first with you and with me. The inworking. The working 
the works of the Holy Spirit inside me is the greatest need. Are you with me? Also you. The Spirit is all divine in its agency and what? Demonstration. God wants you to have the gracious spiritual endowment. Then you will work with a power that you were never conscious of before. Are you with me? It's a new change. It's a change. Love and faith and hope will be an abiding presence. You can go forth in faith, believing that the Holy Spirit what, accompanies you. What a marvelous quotation. Let's unpack that for a little while. So the inworking of the, whole, uh, 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 the unworking ministry of the Holy Spirit is our greatest need. The church's greatest need is the Holy Spirit among us. The Holy Spirit in you, and 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 the Holy Spirit in me. Wow. The Holy Spirit in me is the greatest, greatest, greatest need. When we have that Holy Spirit collectively, or those who have that Holy Spirit collectively, they will then receive that blessing of Revelation chapter 18, they will be those who give that clarion call and what a call that is to come out and join us. What a call that is. The, the, the second line says, the spirit is all divine in its agency and demonstration. All divine. The, we are living in a time when there are some people right now who question whether we have a father, a son, and a Holy Spirit. In the Adventist church. Can you believe that? People are questioning, you know, do we have that? Well, she says, the spirit is all divine in its agency. So I don't know what you will make of that, but I believe that. Now, the text says, the statements rather says, God wants you to have the gracious spiritual endowment. Wow. What is the endowment? the full measure of the Holy Spirit pour out in you, on you, and on me, like the day of Pentecost, are even greater. Then you will work with power. Because we're talking, you see, I'm not so much emphasizing the conversion aspect of the Christian walk this morning. Because this text is taken in, in the first line, it talks, that's the conversion, the inworking of the Holy Spirit, that's the conversion. Now she moves on from conversion to mission. And oftentimes, our churches, we are stuck in the conversion mode. We're always going around talking about in-reach and outreach and which one we should do first. Well, both can be done at the same time. The disciples were in the revival mode and the nurturing mode and the mission mode at the same time with Jesus, learning on as they go. Are you with me? This is not a time when you... Go, go up and you learn and then you go and deliver. No, you learn as you go. That's discipleship. Sometimes we've adopted the, the westernized culture um, in the church and we put things in compartment. But we need to get back to the biblical text and the biblical motif of doing things. And so it says here, here the spirit is all divine in its agency and demonstration. God wants you to have the gracious spiritual endowment. Then you will work with a power that you were never conscious of. Hallelujah. It means then you're not, you and I are no longer in control. The Holy Spirit has taken over now and we are able to do things that we were never conscious of that we could accomplish. Joshua, when he told that sun and the moon to hold fire and stand still where they are, well, do you think that is something that Joshua did every day? No, in that moment of need to finish the battle, all of a sudden the Holy Spirit downloaded into his mind that, hey, guess what? You need more time. And the day is fast uh, closing. The sun is about to set and darkness set in when you will be able to do nothing. Just now speak 
the word to the sun and to the moon and it will hold fire until you finish God's, God's work. When we have the Holy Spirit, we will be doing things that we are not conscious of or before that we could even achieve. We will do impossible things. And we are moving into that era right now. And post-COVID-19 is a taste of that and what is to come. What are some of those spiritual endowment then that we will receive? Love. One of the greatest needs in, in the church, apart from the Holy Spirit, is love. We, you know, we, we did some surveys some, some years ago. And love and compassion was the lowest thing that in the quota, in the quota of, um, in, in the, on the survey, love and compassion was so low, so low, so low. So love and faith and hope will be an abiding presence in your life and in my life, in our life. The love of God, because don't forget God is the God of love. Love and faith. We cannot please God without faith. And hope, we need hope because the things that we talk about, we have not seen. And so we talk about things that we have not seen. What is that? That is faith and hope. Looking beyond those gray clouds and dark skies and bursting through that and touching base with heaven. And saying, yes, Lord, I believe. That's what God will give us as a people when we are faithful to him. Then he says here, she says, you can then now, you can go forth in faith. <laughs> once you have the inworking of the Holy Spirit, and once you are filled uh, with the power of God through the Holy Spirit, you receive the spiritual endowment this will give you power that you did not realize before or even thought through before. And you will then have a supply of love, faith, and hope because the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit is with us and with you and me. And then we can go forward then in full faith, the armor of God, believing that the Holy Spirit accompanies us. You know, walking in darkness sometimes, it could be a fearful thing. I remember growing up in, in Jamaica, and um, sometimes when you are going home, for some reason, you delay, and then the sun sets, and you have to go home in darkness, and you're walking that two miles or two and a half miles to get home, and it's already dark, and you know all the stories that people talk to you about. You know, even stories that didn't, well, to me now, it doesn't make sense, like rolling cough and all these things and ghost and, I would say doppy, but never mind, um, these things. And you were terrified and the least little tree moves or rustling, you know, you're just on and you're walking, trying to walk in the middle of the road, you know, going home. The good thing that at the time when I grew up, there was not much traffic. But when, when you, you meet another person on the road and you you know, you establish that is a person and they're going the same way as you and both of you can walk together, you know, confidence all of a sudden bolster your, your strides and your step and you're walking more confident as you go because there is a companion with you, somebody going the same direction. That's the Holy Spirit coming to join us on our quest to be the remnant people that delivers a message to a dying age old world what a day that will be praise the lord i say what do you say praise the lord and so so we can't go and hit the street right now we can't go and run with the gospel right now because we are locked down but the time will come when that will happen what do you say and then we need to pick up the speed. Not no longer walking with the gospel, but moving with the gospel. What do you say? Because the Holy Spirit will give us power. We need to remember that we, the Seventh-day Adventist Church, and you individually, and I individually, that we are the bridge for someone in need. You know people that I will never know, and likewise. So we need to be the one in need. And so... 
as you walk around the community, just look at your neighbors sometimes to see if the house is okay. Is the curtain pulled? The curtain open? Is it closed? You know, and if not, well, put a note through the door, knock the door. We need to be a caring church. The churches that are demonstrate, demonst demonstrating care during this lockdown period will be the churches that people will go to when time of difficulty comes. We need to be that people. Uh, so there is physical um, needs and mental needs and social concerns that people are, have. The question is, how are you as a congregation trying your best to fulfill those needs for your community? I know in some places, and on a Monday, either my wife or myself, we will go and we join um, a daycare group. Um, no, they're not meeting physically, but they're cooking meals. We used to do about 60 meals on, 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 a, on, a, on, a, on a Monday. Uh, just this last Monday, it was over 140 meals that we did, you know. And then we t took that and delivered that to the community, you know, to members, vulnerable members, and some of our church members too, you know. And so we need to be that bridge of compassion to someone in need. Because it is through working with them in the physical side and the mental side and the social side, as we work with them like that, they then take an interest in our belief, in our testimony, in who we are, and then we are able to introduce them to Jesus, more spiritual concerns. And who knows? Bible study may come. What do you say? So Ellen G. White has this to say in Testimonies, Volume 6, page 425, she says, When the churches are left to inactivity, Satan sees to it that they are employed. <laughs> um, I love this text, this, 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 this um, quote. He occupies the field and engages the members in lines of work that absorb their energies, destroy spirituality and cause them to fall as dead weight upon the church what an indictment when churches are left to inactivity satan sees to it that they are employed whether you like it or not we are there is no middle ground we are all the, either with god or against god and so even in this lockdown where churches are closed, or well, buildings are closed, but churches are still fully open because the church is you and I. It is biological. The church is not bricks and mortar. It is a biological um, group of people um, as we come together in God and in Christ called the Ecclesia, the people of God. And as we come together, there's never a time when we should not be employed or deploy doing God's work. There should never be a time when Satan can employ us as a people. We need to be there on the battlefield. He occupies the field, she says, and engages the members in lines of work that absorb their energy, destroy spirituality, and cause them to fall as dead weight upon the church. No more dead weight. In the post-COVID-19 scenario, when we come out of this, there cannot be any dead weight at all. Every person, every member, every boy, every girl, every man, every woman, brother, sister, every one of us need to be engaged in God's work in some form or another. We cannot just be sitting around. We cannot just be going to church and coming home and going to church and coming home that is not normal that is not normal in god's eyes and will not be normal again everywhere across the globe in every community people are in need of help and your help and my help is there anybody there is the church there where is the adventist church is it just taking up parking spaces what are we doing we need to be a people everywhere across the globe in your community. Right now, people are hurting. 
everything people comes in all color and from all background what do you say black and white and brown and everyone yeah the mission that we have is to go and make disciples matthew 28 and discipleship making is not just making Adventist disciples of the Adventist members that we have, but to make disciples of everybody and everywhere. We've got to find a way. We've got to find a way. People are in need. In need. In need, my friend. And they come in all shapes and sizes. They come. And sometimes, oh yeah, when we come out of COVID-19, many of them will rush back to the clubs and pubs and Many of them will go and enjoy themselves, but guess what? Deep down in their heart, they will know that life, that life is short. And they would want to reach out to you in their quiet moment to find out more. The question is, will you be there for them? Will the Billston Seventh-day Adventist Church be there for them? And how will you be there for them? How will you strategize and plan and pray to be ready for what is to come? Because just like you did not know, and I did not know that COVID-19 was on its way, you don't know what God has on its way and what's coming. My friends, Revelation 1, 7, Behold, he is coming with clouds. And we better believe it. And every eye will see him, even they who pierced him. And all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him. Even so, amen. The tribes of the earth, every people group will mourn when he comes. Our job is to minimize the amount of people that will mourn when he comes by rescuing the perishing and care for the dying. We are like, you know, the SAS. We need to go in there with the word of God, tactfully with love and hope and compassion and present the word convincingly to them, not in trying to, you know, browbeat them or to bash them over the head with the Bible, but lovingly share our testimonies with them. Share our favorite Bible passage with them. You may say, well, pastor, I don't know how to give Bible studies. Well, this is the time to learn. It's a lot of time to learn how to give Bible studies. That when we come out of this, you'll be able to give Bible studies. But most, of, most important than giving Bible studies is that you need to learn how to give your testimony, how to share your testimony, because that's more, more important and more powerful than any Bible study on the planet. Revelation 3, verse 11. Behold, I'm coming quickly. Hold fast what you have, that no one may take your crown. Hold fast, my friend. Don't give up. Hold fast. Hold fast. Revelation 16, 15. Behold, I'm coming as a thief. Blessed is he who watches and keep his garments, lest you walk naked and they see your shame. Revelation 22, 7. Behold, I'm coming quickly. Blessed is he who keeps the words of the prophecy of this book. Revelation 18, 1. After these things, behold, I saw another angel coming down. The angel, the time is about to break upon us. Matthew 24, because I'm coming to a close. Verse 12 to 14. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow whole. King James says, wax cold. Okay? But he who endures to the end shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a weakness to all nations and then the end will come we are going nowhere until this gospel has been preached across the globe to every people group we're not going anywhere we're going to be right here oh yeah until this text is fulfilled this is a criteria from jesus himself to the remnant church to say we need to do our part and so my friend Revelation 22 20 he who testifies to these things says surely I am coming quickly amen even so come Lord Jesus he's coming my friends he's coming he's coming we all need to make that commitment that we will 
use this time to prepare our thoughts, our minds, our resources, and ways of reaching out. But even during this time, let us not just use Zoom or Microsoft Team just for church and meetings. Let us also find ways to use it for Bible studies and to run seminars for people. It's time to reach out. Seminars and Bible studies online. Let's find a way to reach out to people. May God bless you. May his peace be upon you. And may you be blessed because Jesus is looking for you. So my words to you is be strong. Keep hope alive. And may the blessings of Almighty God keep you firm and strong until we all meet again in Jesus' name. Amen. May you be blessed. Amen. Thank you for that sermon. Um, we will now have the closing hymn, and then we're going to have the closing prayer by Pastor Simpson. The closing hymn is hymn 260. Hover over me, Holy Spirit. Need the Holy Spirit to fill us indeed. Let us pray. Eternal Father, God, we, your people, your last day of remnant church calls out to you father that you may forgive us where we have been slouchy forgive us where we have negated to do your work forgive us lord because we may not realize the time in which we are living so father forgive us forgive us where we have failed you but now we ask lord that you may fill us as the songwriter says, fill us all, now fill us. Lord, may your peace now be with us. May your grace be with us. May we be filled with the endowed, spiritual endowments needed of love and faith and hope and knowing that the presence of the Holy Spirit is with us, that we may experience the indwelling of the Holy Spirit and that we may, Lord, experience also that group be part of a great commission to go and call those who are in places of worship across this planet to come out of her my people and to join you in one worship in truth may your spirit captivate our minds and makes us prisoners to heaven we pray that we may serve you and that the hope of God may burn in our minds and our hearts. That our tongue will not fail to confess you. That you are Lord and Savior and soon coming King. Be with the church in Bilston and those who are listening. May your peace rest upon us, we pray. And may conviction be ours, we pray. Moment by moment and day by day. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.